How you doing, movie fans, and welcome back to The Potato, where we're just a whirlwind of movie news and reviews from a couch potato. And if this is your first time here, I would really appreciate your support. Please subscribe. So like most of you out there, I've been isolated at home a lot and practicing social distancing. So I decided to kind of challenge myself by only watching movies that I either haven't seen or haven't seen in over 10 years just to see how well they've aged. And as a result, um, I've now watched 103 movies since social distancing started in early March. <laughs> so today I thought it would be kind of fun to run down this list and comment on some of the films I've watched. And this list is gonna get pretty random. There's some movies here that are old, some that are new, and we're covering all genres. It really is a whirlwind. So, let's begin. The Invisible Man. So, I really had my doubts about this film, especially after Universal failed with establishing their dark universe, but they finally did something right. They don't try to overcomplicate things in this film with an annoying, slow backstory with an origin. No, they just jump right in, and it pays off. All right, so Red Dawn. No, not that Red Dawn, the good one. Yes, thank you. Whew. So Red Dawn, after watching it, it kind of sent me on this 80s action movie kick. Because after watching this, I then watched Rambo 3. And then I realized that the RPG really was a staple of over-the-top, ridiculous action movies in the 80s. Like, RPGs were just unlimited. People were not running out of them. They were, just, they were just pulling them out of everywhere and firing them. If you weren't firing an RPG in an 80s action movie, then you just weren't good. Simple as that. My action movie crusade then led down the path of uh, some of the Die Hard movies. You know, I sometimes forget that they made five of these films. I mean, after three, it was all kind of a blur. So I got reacquainted with four and five, and now I remember why. Because part four, you know, it's got Justin Long in it. It's rated PG-13 and it involves like cyber terrorism and those movies just don't age well at all. Yeah, I'm looking at you hackers. Check this out, guys. This is insanely great. It's got a 28.8 BPS modem. And part five was just kind of a shadow of its former self with, with Jai Courtney playing McLean's son and end up in Chernobyl. It, it was just horrible. Yeah, don't ever go down that road. I finally saw The Revenant. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio plays fur trapper Hugh Glass, which sounds like a made-up name when you think about it. It sounds like a name that Bart Simpson would have come up with years ago. I'm looking for a friend of mine. Last name Jazz, first name Hugh. A uh, Hugh Jazz! Somebody check the men's room for a Hugh Jazz! But it is based on a true story, and I think uh, probably loosely based on a true story. I mean, Glass survived like a horrendous bear attack. This was in 1823. And then after six weeks, found his way back to civilization after he was left for dead. Um, the movie has some great action, although definitely uh, dramatized for Hollywood. I don't, I don't know about steering your horse off of a cliff into a tree to survive. I don't think that would ever really happen. But it's still a great, great movie. And Tom Hardy just plays a great villain in this. The Netflix film Extraction, starring Chris Hemingsworth. You know, I gotta say, this film is it's very light on the plot, but let's face it. You're not watching it for the plot. You're watching it for the action. And in that case, very much delivers. And I'll go as far to say the action sequences in this are some of the best I have seen in years. So if that's your thing, I strongly suggest you check it out. What about the 2001 film Josie and the Pussycats? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I've, I've never seen Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, really? That's funny because yesterday you called it the best film of 2001. No, I didn't. He's, he's lying. Wow. If that's the case, then this person sounds just like you. Oh, Josie and the Pussycats really is the best film of 2001. S the Way Back, starring Ben Affleck as a former high school basketball player who's a little washed up and takes over as coach of his former team. It's an alright film, but it really does check off every cliche in the book that you could possibly imagine. It's like, yeah, he was an all-star that walked away from the game. Yeah, he has trouble with alcoholism. He has an ex-wife. He has a dead kid. The players on the team are underachievers. It's, it's not a bad film to watch in midday, but it's not something that I would highly recommend. Casino. This 1995 crime drama starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Sharon Stone still holds up to this day. I mean, I'd say by this point, Martin Scorsese pretty much already had this genre mastered. You know what kind of movie you're getting. It's gonna be a long movie, but it's gonna be a good movie. 
And also, I mean, Sharon Stone's in this, and I gotta ask, is there a Sharon Stone movie from this era that she does not sleep with somebody in? I feel like that was just expected in the 90s. If Sharon Stone was in a movie, she was probably gonna have sex with somebody. I'm just saying. Underwater, starring Kristen Stewart. I mean, it's okay. I'm just not really a fan of Kristen Stewart. Is anybody? I mean, she always looks so miserable. She needs to smile a little bit more, don't you think? Anyway, she stars in this sci-fi film where a bunch of people are housed underwater in this drilling facility and then an earthquake happens and it just unleashes hell all over the whole base, forcing them to walk underwater to a secure location. But the quake also kicked up these creatures from the beyond. And you know, it has some moments that are kind of scary. I, if you're going to watch this, I strongly suggest watching it with the lights out to dial up the creepiness. It's a decent rental. I am embarrassed to admit it, but I had never seen The Fugitive. And I am glad I finally did, because this movie is awesome. I love The Fugitive. Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones are just awesome in it. And I think that films that these action thrillers from the 90s are better than a lot of the ones we see today, because it was before cell phones and certain technologies could help police do their job. And as a result, it just made the plot just a little bit better, since the police had to work harder to do their job. I still think they should make movies like this and just have the plot take place in the 90s. That would solve everything. E.T., you know, after I haven't seen it for such a long time, I'm glad it still holds up. It is a classic. I love it. And now I remember why I had such a hard time watching this as a little kid. And it's just because of seeing E.T. just all pale and white on the verge of death in the water. And then seeing him struggling to breathe on the bathroom floor. It was a little much for me as a little kid. Although, I somehow managed to sit through Robocop and watching Clarence Boddicker put a bullet through Alex Murphy's head in the beginning of the movie. That was traumatizing, but I was able to sit through that. I mean, I still haven't recovered from that. I mean, Clarence Boddicker is just terrifying to me. And the actor that plays him, Kurtwood Smith, I can never look at him the same. Every time I see him, I just think of Clarence Boddicker. Predestination, this was a movie that caught me really by surprise. This 2014 sci-fi film starring Ethan Hawke, who plays a special agent that is able to travel through time in an attempt to stop bad events from happening. And in this case, it's a bombing that's going to kill thousands of people. There is a lot of story here, and it definitely goes in a direction that I just didn't see coming. I highly recommend it, and it's actually free to watch right now on the Tubi app. Well, everybody, that's some of the films that I've been watching here, and hopefully you're keeping busy at home, too. And I will see you soon. Thanks. Potato.